All right, welcome back to your Adobe Premiere tutorials. This is lesson six, or lesson one, part six, for making a picture project. Um, essentially, we left off at 30 seconds and 12 frames. Here's where we were. All right, so that ends there, and it continues on. We'll take a look at what we're about to do. Uh, one reminder, though, it, it does end exactly at 30 seconds and 12 frames, so if your pictures are hanging over, you should trim them back to here, so we start at this beat and work forward. Um, this is what we're going to do over to my previously made version, so I'll play this part through. Alright, we finished this. Here's the move. All right, so this part is pretty easy. We're going to be putting in three pictures. Each picture comes in as a part of a picture. We'll do some cropping so that we can get all three to fit the screen. And then when they go to move at that noise, we'll put the star field behind it so that we see the star field back there. I even added some motion so the star field was moving. Made it look more like it was traveling in space. We get here and we start a bunch of pictures motioning through the screen at the same time. That's essentially, hold on, and why we have this, what I call a staircase. And it goes up well, up to there. I'm going to end up having you use six video tracks so you learn how to use layering. Here goes. <laughs> So as you can see, this picture 11.5 comes in first and then uh, does a spin away that's actually a basic 3D effect. The other pictures are coming through. We could add more motion rotation uh, to them, but for now, they're moving through. And then when the beat comes back, we're going to start using pictures again. Alright, so that's about where we want to get to. So. Let's go ahead and go back to our timeline and get started. So first thing I need to do is get pictures, I believe it's 8, 9, 10, into the equation from Stoney Young, I believe, 8, 9, and 10. I'm going to highlight all three drag them into the timeline and all three of them are there. Now I'm going to begin to staircase them with the music to arrive, not to mention where it should end. I kind of look at both situations when I'm building a video like this. I guess we'll start in video 4 so that we can have the pictures work their way in 8, 9, then 10 and then we'll have the star field down here for that noise in order to travel away with the star field. How long should it last? Well, we let the music dictate this, so let's listen to it. So that whole build-up, essentially, sort of sounds like it's winding up and hits that uh, horn and drum. That's the section we're going to work with. So let's, let, let's take each picture and get at least the end figured out so we can then build some animation. Right there. Let's go in and make sure. Yeah, there's that drum beat. I'm going to say 37, 12, 37 seconds and 12 frames. So I'm going to cut this picture off. I'm going to lengthen this picture to it and this picture to it. So that gives us the ending part for all three of these pictures to go away. Now we can animate them so that they smoothly work off to the same endpoint in time, this endpoint. So now to time them coming in and have them fit the screen properly. Here we go. So there's beats here. We're going to use the beats. Ignore what's happening now. We have to adjust this. I think that's what I used. I'm going to double check. Alright, two bases and a snare. Base, base, snare. Well, yeah. Base, base, snare. Okay, 
So here we are. So we got base, first picture, second base. Second base starts, if you listen, you can hear the thump. I'm going to say 3109. Second picture goes to there. There's that symbol. To get right on it, I can use my frame advance. I'm going to go right there. 3205 is the third picture. All right, so they now come in on the beats that we want. Boom, boom, snare. And then we're going to have the noise. And then we'll deal with the motion. All right, so now they have to appear so we can see them. So let's do some cropping. Um, I have my custom bin, but it is actually a video effect that we could search for or just type crop. Here it is. I'm going to drag it and I'm going to put it on this picture. Actually, all of them are going to require some kind of cropping. Well, the first one will. We can probably use that picture to hide some of the other pictures behind. So here we are. Crop. Now let's crop it down. I'm going to touch the word crop so I can manually do it, or I could use the numbers. We're not going to set animations, so no stopwatches. We're just going to set one change. I'm going to go right there where I'm looking fairly dapper. Move it over here. Get my brother in the picture too. Now it's not quite centered, so I'm going to move it over a little bit as well from the motion. For you, it should be some kind of a single panel in the middle of your screen. How about size? Yeah, I'm going to make it a little bit smaller so I have more room for everything to fit. Oops. I'm going to go with about here for the middle. I'm going to move it up a little bit. I think we're pretty good. Second picture. Alright, so this picture needs to appear on one of the sides, so I'm going to take it and put it on the left. To do that, first I'm going to move it there. We're a bit big. I'm making my picture a little bit smaller. Now don't make it so small that the black area behind the picture shows. I'm going to go with this and reposition it. Notice we don't have to crop. That's mainly because we're hiding our picture edge outside of the viewing area and behind this picture. There's two pictures now. So let's position this picture and resize it. Third picture. Position it over here. I'm in the pool with my brother. I'm going to cut him out, I believe. Let's make it a little larger and position it there. Now, I haven't cropped these but there may be a reason to do so. If I was to just make these pictures disappear at the end of their duration, no one would notice that I'm hiding this picture and this picture behind the center picture. But because we're going to move them backwards, they're not going to look right if they go backwards at the size as they are. I'll show you what I mean. I'm going to actually add an animation to picture one or eight, the first picture. So I'm going to go ahead and hit the scale button so that I can start its size and then make another with the change to make it move back. Let me find where this happens. Right after that noise at the bass beat. That's the bass beat at 3222. So that's really where this keyframe should be. So I'm going to move it there. Now that means I just set a keyframe with the stopwatch at this size, this size right here for the middle picture. And I'm placing it at the beat where we want to start the movement backwards. So I move backwards. And I need to make this basically go down to zero. I'm not going to go all the way to the end. I'll make the change first and then I'll move the keyframe. Making the change creates the keyframe when it's the second or third or any other. So this picture is cropped, so it actually looks pretty good. It's small and skinny as it goes back to nowhere. This one I'm going to like. This keyframe needs to move to the end, so it does it for the entire duration of the picture, meaning from here all the way to here. Now let's try that. There it goes. All right. And everything goes off on the beat, which is good. But they're going to all go away slowly. 
So now do the, to do the other two, if I take picture 9, and I do the same thing, I set the keyframe for its starting position, this position in size, and then I move it backwards, it will do essentially the same thing, but its shape may throw us off. So here's what I'm going to do. Picture 8, I see this is the keyframe. I want to get right on top of it. To be sure, I can just simply use this button that pushes me from one keyframe to the next. So I'm on the keyframe, 3222. I'm going to switch to this picture, and that's where I still am, 3222. So I'm going to now set my keyframe for this picture size and position. Those keyframes now represent size and position. I didn't set position for this picture when it moves back, because I know it will move to the center of the screen because of its anchor point, which is in the center of the picture. What I mean is if I click on this picture and I touch anchor point, well, it doesn't allow me to touch it. It's essentially the spot that is the middle of the picture. I can move that spot to different places, and that becomes where the picture would move to instead of moving to the center. I'll show you. So in this picture, again, we've got the keyframe set for this picture's already determined size and position. And we're at the same exact place where the previous picture started moving. As we go through time, we would like this picture, this picture, to get smaller as well, to zero. And there we are move the keyframe to the end of the picture so that it travels from here to the end which is the keyframe to the end but the shape is different as is the positioning and so we're going to change some of this actually that doesn't look that bad I might crop off to get rid of this white edge but I might try to make them look uniform the previous video, they were all three uniform. All right, third picture, same thing. I'm going to click on it, and I'm going to set keyframes for it so it can move back as well as these two have in the same exact time and fashion. If I go back to picture nine or eight, I'll find the position where we started the motion. If I use this button, it'll move me to the previous keyframe. All right, so that's the point here that we'd like to be as well. Now I'm going to go ahead and set the keyframes for what we've already established for our picture and now move it backwards. So as time moves on, we're going to set it back to zero. Now see how this one takes off way over there? So that's not good. So we're going to have to change something to make this work properly. I'm not going to actually mess with the anchor point. Instead we're just going to change its position moving backwards. So as it moves backwards, I'm going to move it down somewhat. Not so much that I can't see it anymore. I'm going to change its position, which will set a second keyframe for the position as well because we already set the first one, and that's why I did this. So I'll move the first numbering over so that it's moving back you know, in a rough area where it should be. I want it to end about here in line with the others. Now I'll test it. And it's too far over. I think it needs to be over here a little bit more so that it's equal with the other one. I like symmetry, which is balance. So I'm going to change this keyframe. I'll move back to it. Oops. Hit the button to move back to it. So I'm on the keyframe. I'm going to change this keyframe position. I'm actually going to move it over here. Um, here. Trying to make it basically go away to the same position that this one goes away to on the opposite side of the screen. Let's test it. That's not bad. The only reason this picture stopped is because the keyframes aren't at the end, the end of the picture yet. So I'll move them there. And now watch it again. I didn't go to zero. I must not have set this other one to zero. Oh, I didn't because I was watching it. So I have to change the keyframe I just messed up on. I'm going to send to the next keyframe. It's on it. You can't see it, but it's on it. I'm going to change it to zero. Now I should be good. Now while that works, 
I still think it looks better if the pictures were the same size or roughly the same size. So I'm going to add a crop to each of the other two pictures so they, they are similar to the middle picture. I'll look at all three at the same time by putting my current time indicator over all three. I'm going to go and grab the crop effect, which I still have up, and put it on pictures 9 and 10. I could do that both at the same time if I highlight them. Or you can do one and then the other, your choice. All right, I'm going to set the crops at the, uh, actually, I'll just set them now. I want to try to make this picture be actually the size that we see, or as close to it as I can so that when it moves back it's similar size to this one. So to do that I'll select the picture which is the second picture. Um, I'm going to go to crop which we just added to it and I'm going to adjust the crop. Now I can't see the lines but if I change the fit window I could avoid using these numbers and still use my handles. I'm going to make it small 25 percent. Now I can see where this picture actually is. This is the picture. I'm just seeing part of it. So I'm going to crop off this part, not all of it, just enough off the screen. This part, this part, and then I need to get up here and get this part. I'm going to have to make this viewing size smaller, 10%. There it is. I'm going to move it down. This comes in handy to change your viewing of, this, of your screen so you can see things that are off the screen. I'm going to put it back to fit. So this picture now will be similar size to this one this picture same thing click on it go to its crop remember you always have to select the file that you want to use in the effects controls make sure the current time indicator is over that file so you can see it not like this like this so this picture let's crop it clip on it move it over okay I can't see the other sides so I'm gonna change my zoom probably need to change it more Here's the bottom being sliced, the top being sliced, and now the other side. I'm going to change it to 10. The side. Okay, it's pretty darn close. Fit. Trim it. Now all three pictures are roughly the same size, and it should look a little more uniform. If something happened to the bottom of this picture. I need to change that. Crop. There. Okay. Wait, why did this go back? No, it didn't. That's the actual outside edge of the real picture. I even cropped it pretty darn close to this other image. I can see a black line here, so I think I need to adjust that crop. Looks like everything moved. Oh, it did because I'm in a different point in time where the picture's moving. I need to do that adjustment before the keyframes, and they're still still. fix that real quick. Good to know you don't want to be making adjustments to your picture while it's actually in motion in this section. I should do it here where it's still. Okay so there we are three pictures moving off into space. We still have to add the weird little left to right jiggle. Alright first let's put the star field in so that when we do move back the star field appears back here. So that's why I kept track one empty. I need to put the star field behind everything else, which is under. I don't have the star field here available. I need to go get it. You'll probably have to do the same thing. Feel free to go to google.com or something similar to search for a star field that you like. Make sure to keep it in high resolution. And then uh, we'll bring it in. Uh, I noticed that the top of this picture when it moves is a little off. I'm going to need to trim it. So I'm going to click on it. I have a crop on it already. Click on it. There, I'm going to be happier about this. Okay. Now, let's go ahead and go back to doing what we were going to do, which is to add the star field. I already have mine, so I'm going to double click and navigate to my folder. grab the star field. You again need to save one from Google or ask me for this one and I'll send it to you. Okay, I'm going to put the star field in the timeline and track one. There. And a little bit before or right around when the picture starts moving because I need to make sure it's already there. We won't see it because it's covered. But we will hear when it starts to move. 
Now we've made the star field move in my other one, or come at us. That's simply just doing a scale change. So I'm going to click on the picture. I'm going to go up to motion. I'm going to set my, well, let's see how big the picture is. Oh, that's a pretty big picture. I'm going to back it up a little bit to this edge. All right, fills the screen, set my first keyframe. And again, you will have a different number than me based on the size of your actual picture and how big you want it to be, which is to fill the screen. I'm going to bring this keyframe to the beginning because we set it. As time goes on, I'm going to move the stars towards us by making the scale larger so the stars come towards us. I'm not going to go too much or it'll move too fast. The amount of change you apply to the duration of time dictates the actual speed. I'll move this keyframe to the end and we'll look at it. All right, so everything's timed, except this star field will actually keep going for a little longer. I'll bring it out. You should do the same. That's actually kind of cool, too, that the star field stopped at the beep, but we'll continue with what we did before. All right, at this point, everything is in except for the little shake in these three pictures. So let's go ahead and add the shake. And I think some of you already know we're going to add keyframes, but this time to rotation. All right, there's that noise. Let's zoom in and find it. I think this is it. Yeah. Eh, eh, bump. All right, to make this work, we need to set some keyframes on each picture to make it move. And we'll use one picture to guide the other two. So I'll start with the center picture, which is my top picture. I need to move the current time indicator to a point where the first little zap noise is. And I want to make it move to the left, to the right, and I think back to center. Let me look at the original to be sure. Yeah, it's left, 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 right, and it's beat, it's moving. So the movement has to end before the beat. All right, so here we go. Left, right, beat. Here's the first one. So I'm going to set a keyframe for my rotation. Ignore the other keyframes, that's for the motion. This is where it's going to actually start moving. I can zoom in here if I'd like to see things a little clearer. Uh, it's only going to give me so much. Okay, what I'm going to do now is add the rotation. So I'm going to set a stopwatch for zero because I want to have it start at zero. But as the noise happens, I think it should go left, then it should go right, but then by the beat, it's back to home. So, left. There we go. One, two, three, uh, about three frames, I think. Yeah, I think three, maybe four frames. So the buzz starts at 32.13. So and that's where we have our keyframe. Already set it with the stopwatch. So I move over four frames. One, two, three, four. The reason I can do this is I'm way zoomed in. You could also use your frame advance. I need to set a keyframe here to have the picture lean to the right. That would be rotation to the right. But be careful, don't go nuts. I just want to move it a little. So I'm going to move it about that much right there. About 11%. You should have something similar. And then on the second note, it needs to be moving back to the other direction. Actually, I just realized something. I think we need to have this keyframe be back a little bit more. I'm going to move it back at least one frame to the third frame. Zoom in if you can't see it. You might have to make this window bigger. Okay, so that's three keyframes. One, two, three. One, two, three. Okay. Now I'm going to move it back to the other side one two three it needs to be over by at least this noise if not the second I'm gonna cheat a little I'm gonna say about 3219 I'm gonna add my keyframe bringing it back the other way 
which would be negative 11, the opposite direction. You can move it or simply type in negative 11. It'll move to the same exact position, opposite side. And then by the beat, we have to be back to home or zero. So I'll move to the beat. There it is at 32.22. And I'm going to move it back to zero by setting it at zero. And that puts a final keyframe in. So remember, the first keyframe was put in by your stopwatch. The next three were put in by changes. Let's see if it looks right. I think it does. So I need to do, to do the same thing to the other two pictures, the second and third. So first I'm going to, using the first picture, go to the same position in time so I have, I have all my measurements already. I can move there manually or use the button to get to the first keyframe. Notice I can't go any further because that is the first. I'm going to zoom in a little. So on the next picture down, I'm going to select it. This is where I need to start the previous settings. All right, now let's set our keyframes. So we need a zero first, our start. Then we moved it three over. First we went four, but I moved it back one. So let's go over three. One, two, three. Notice it's the same exact place this one is. So I will take and now change this to 11. So it moves the same. And then I'm going to move over a couple more. I think I went to right there. I can see it from this one. Three more. Move it to negative 11. And move it back to zero at the beat. I get my same four keyframes. Let's go ahead and try it. Okay. So now the third picture needs it. So same thing. I'm going to use the keyframe from the previous picture. The first one, I'll move to it. All right, I'm on the first keyframe. I'm going to go to the third picture, so I'm in the right place in time, and start setting keyframes for the same motion for the third picture. Zero is our first. Three frames over is our second. To change it to 11, which puts in the second keyframe. Three more over, and we'll move it back to negative 11. And to the beat, three more, and back to zero. And now, at the beat, they'll begin moving backwards. Here we go. Okay, you know what? That's as good a place as any to leave off. So this is the end of lesson six. You saw how to do a few things. One of them adding crop again to do some basic trimming of your pictures. Another to add keyframes for motion, but this time the addition was for rotation. Um, and you uh, used a background image to layer your other images over. So pretty good work. Puts us now out to essentially 37.12, and we're ready to move to the next lesson next time.